So the first thing we did is we fit these doors to the truck. Uh, took some time to adjust the hinges, to look at any questions or concerns about whether or not they would go directly to the door openings on this model. They do. I also affixed the weather stripping to the door. Go back and watch my other video on putting the doors on because that helped me determine the fitment, make sure everything was good. So in our uh, quest to get these painted, step one, get the weather strips off. So after the uh, weather strip is off, we've got to clean the adhesive. So what we're doing here is uh, I went through a lot of trouble to fit these doors to the truck already and to get these hinges in the right spot. And I'd like to speed that process up when I put it back together. So what I did is I made a template here. It has the uh, left side and the right side and which side is up. And this right here is a right side door or passenger door. And what I'm gonna do is drop it over here. It fits, it fits pretty snug and then run my quarter inch straight down. This is a trick. We did something similar back when I used to do a lot of Corvette work. The doors are drilled with a indexing pin that should be pretty close to where we need to be. I, this is gonna save a lot of time when I put the truck back together. Right rear top, right rear bottom. Right front bottom, right front top, bing, bing, bing. And we are labeled, 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 labeled. So I'm ready to take those hinges off. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do here is make sure that the edges of the doors are smooth that we don't have any burrs that might cut, uh, snag, stick. And some of the edges have actually gotten damaged maybe in shipping and when I've uh, moved them around the garage. If you don't have one of these tools, you really want one of these tools. And this tool allows us to run one of these uh, Rolock type discs. What's really neat about it is these things just snap in. Uh, I, I use these for some of the things you can't even imagine. Real important, and I'm probably gonna mention this a couple times maybe, you don't wanna mix aluminum and steel in terms of sanding or prep. So um, this, these discs that I'm using here are only gonna be for prepping, doing things with aluminum. Uh, when you mix the metals together microscopically, sanding them, you actually create a situation where the dissimilar metals will react. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do, uh, not only where I gouge it with a razor blade, but there are there are rough little edges all around the door openings, and we're just going to take and smooth those. Midwest Military Equipment did a great job on getting them, you know, roughed in and safe, where they're not going to cut you, but. For example, here's an area here. This is just where maybe I put it upside down and bumped it on the floor or something, or maybe in transit. So I'm gonna go around and clean up the edges. It's gonna take a few minutes. And then we're gonna tape off the back of these and get them ready for the next step. Next step here, I've got all that papered off, taped. In a perfect world, we would completely disassemble the doors. Um, the good news is that they came pre-assembled. They're mostly held together with rivets for the tracks and window supports. That's great. But if you're gonna paint it, since it's held together with rivets on a lot of those tracks, we're not gonna drill those out and start over. In this case, we're gonna leave them there, which just means a lot of paper and tape in order to get it sealed off. I also, for now, left this area here exposed because I intend to blow paint up into here so that when the new weather strip goes on, it bonds to that paint. 
and it won't be sitting right on the metal. And as moisture comes down the doors and gets caught around it, it won't be sitting on the raw aluminum. So next thing is, I'm gonna scotch bright this in prep. I prep solvent, you know, wax and grease remover over them. And now I'm basically taking this scotch bright pad and working it into the nooks and crannies trying to kind of take off any sharp edges because paint doesn't like to stick well to that. This will help get the surface ready to adhere for the final. That's it. Rinse, repeat, do it again. Rinse, repeat, do it again. I'll be doing this for all four doors. A solid 60 degrees. I'm sitting at 58. I'm bringing the main garage temperature up way more than I normally would do. I'm blowing some air in. Got my window open back there. I'm bringing in the uh, heat from the Mr. Heater. I do have a air detector here. Gonna let me know whether or not I'm in trouble. And uh, we're gonna just start bringing the temp up. So I'm gonna go take a break. Uh, get a snack or something, get ready to start mixing the primer. What I'm gonna do when I prime is I'm gonna shut down all of the heat sources in here during the time that I'm priming because of the open flame. And then I'm gonna switch to a air ventilation, push the uh, fumes out, and then I'll turn around and bring the temperature back up again. We're gonna have to have it up the temperature to spray the primer up to two coats. We'll see how it coats. And then uh, I've gotta get down here, work my edges. We'll lay the green on. It's gonna be at least two coats of the green, maybe three. When that's fully flash, then I'll start doing the pattern, the camo pattern. We're still waiting on the temperature to come up and uh, getting pretty close actually. Just to go over the product that we're using here, this is a shop line product, which is a division of PPG. This is an epoxy primer. I had a choice between white, gray, or black, um, assuming that we're gonna get some pretty heavy scrapes and scratches on the truck. I thought black would probably be the best if it scratches through or when it does. This is a two to one ratio for, the, for these two, and then you can further reduce it with acetone if need be. Uh, by the way, too, um, obviously you should leave these things up to professionals. That's the uh, disclaimer. But when you're painting, a lot of the information is immediately available. So my paint supplier printed out the, the text sheet on this, and it tells me the ratios that I need. It tells me how long it's gonna last in my, my gun and it tells me the products I need to go along with it. And it gives me my flash times for drying, air pressure, you know, pretty much everything you need to know to spray it is hidden away in there. Why'd we choose this? Epoxy primers, it's a two component, so it means it's catalyzed, it, it causes a reaction when you mix it. Uh, it provides superior corrosion protection and adhesion when applied over properly cleaned and sanded bare metal, fiberglass, and painted surfaces. So that exactly fits our situation. Bare metal components here, and we need to provide some protection for it. So uh, what we'll do, my temperature is looking really nice. As far as spray guns, you don't have to, especially for a job like this, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I've picked up different guns over the years. Uh, this is one that's popular. You get these at uh, China Freight. These um, typically used to be like 15 bucks. I mean, ridiculously cheap. Uh, but for just doing primer, whatnot, these actually work fine. Um, 
The gun that I'm going to use today for the primer is just sort of a knockoff HVLP high volume low pressure gun. We're going to spray it out at about 10 psi. This one is also a uh, China Freight uh, unit. It's a little bit more expensive than the purple one, but it's still uh, a, just a cheap gun. Depending on how well that cleans up or sprays, I may actually spray the green with that as well because this is not a high-end paint shop that I'm doing. But I've got my uh, DeVilvis finish line in the, in the waiting in the wings. This is a higher quality gun than the other ones. And this one is a, um, capable of producing some pretty professional paintwork. So today, again, we're working here in a garage. This is a flat finish, a semi-gloss flat uh, sheen. Um, not really worried about a lot of the things I'd be worried about if I was spraying a uh, base coat clear coat. Uh, but we're going to start out here. We're going to get this uh, loaded here shortly. I'm going to go take a coffee break and then we'll get going. Uh, the other thing too, you want to pick these up when you're at the paint store. Pretty handy for mixing your paint. We're going to go two to one. So here we go right here. Two to one. It, uh, it says up to half part. So that would be two to one to half. So we'll fill up with the primer, then the uh, additive that catalyt catalyzes it, and then you've got the half that you can bump up to get that um, acetone in there. So we'll see. I mix the maximum that this cup can mix at the two to one to 0.5 ratio. And we are now Letting that go, they want to allow a induction period of about 15 minutes before spraying. So getting her all mixed up and getting everybody introduced to each other in here for the party. And then this liquid will become a permanent part of that machine out there. You always want to take a tack rag, a tack cloth, very gently drag it around your surface. This will pick up excess dust and grit. As you can see, I don't have a real paint booth clean condition here because of the nature of what we're painting. I would do this completely different on a bar, base coat, clear coat, etc. But either, even so, we're still going to tack it, make sure there's nothing silly there that would prevent good adhesion with the primer. It's already picking junk up, so it's definitely worth doing. Yeah, so that was what you would have thought a clean door, not so clean. It is now. So I had a couple spots lift on me. I clearly had some uh, oil or grease that didn't get cleaned off around here. So I've uh, let that flash, scuffed it down, Kim washed it, and uh, if all goes well, I'm gonna be able to dump another coat on here. So let's see what happens. Time for the color coat, the first color coat. And honestly, this gun is working for what I'm doing. Remember, this is military truck, flat paint, um, etc. It's not my old Camaro or something. So um, I've been happy with it. It's working. I don't want to bother trying to clean this one up and start over, so I'm actually going to put this one away. 
This is Dell Fleet, Dell Fleet Essentials, made by PPG. It's a polyurethane single stage. And I tore my label, sorry about that. But anyway, so it is a uh, military coating 3D3 green. We looked it up, there's actually a military chart, military color chart. So that's where this came from. Um, I had to go online and look at some of the product information because it didn't have it. I forgot to print that before I left. That's looking like the right stuff in there. Uh, my mixture for this stuff is six to one to one. And there is no six to one to one pre on here. So what I did is I went to, it's gonna be this guy and this guy are gonna be the hardener and the activator. Uh, so it's important to get the D-gloss activator hardener there or else this will be shiny. So um, we're gonna get this mixed, gonna get it in the gun. I'm gonna blow things down, check my temperatures. I have to wait 30 minutes after two coats in there and then uh, I'm gonna nail it with the green. So YouTube is potentially the reality TV, the real reality TV. Oh, just like that, literally, literally I dropped that in the paint. Okay, so I screwed up. Um, let's start this over again. The Dell Fleet Mix is six to one to one. There is no six to one to one on here, so I'm gonna have to go to six, seven, eight. Six. I'm going to go to seven. And we're going to take this to eight. There we go. I can't mix a whole lot at one shot here, but we'll get this in the hopper, kind of go from there. But it's six to one to one, and since my gun doesn't, my uh, my since my mixing container doesn't do six to one to one, I should be okay because I just went six to one to one. Math is hard. Well, guys and girls, here goes nothing or something. Uh, temperature's great. I've got my air ventilation moving out. I'm going to grab that light, get down low, get some of the color on that edge, and then see what happens. So now the uh, fun begins. I got three coats on of the 383 green. And I had them mix up the brown and the black on the same military paint chart in the, you know, the flat or sheet, whatever they call this. And uh, these things are pretty amazing. They, they mix the paint, they put it in a pressurizing deal, pressurizes them. Catalyst and activator is in, is already in the can. And um, when you take this little guy out, push him on the bottom here and push it. When you push that on the bottom, it'll break the seal between the two. And then this is now fully catalyzed and mixed like we were doing with the bigger one, shooting with the gun. Um, I probably spent too much money doing it this way but uh, figure for the touch-ins, the brown, and the more I look at it, there's, there's more brown and black on there than I thought. But anyway, it's up to interpretation, I guess, how I do it. But um, I've got this ready to go. I've got the, 
I've got the canvas doors and I see the pattern. And as I look at it, it really looks to me like the brown went on green, brown, and then black. So that's the pattern we're gonna follow. Um, I got this shaken up. I'm heating the garage back up in here again. For the brown, I mean, there's there's not a lot of it compared to the uh, there's not a lot of the brown compared to the black or the green. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop the cap on the other on the black, and then we'll just keep doing this and, until they look like the other doors. Let's take a tour of it while it's still drying. Hopefully all the flattening agent was put in these. They're pretty shiny right now. But uh, hey, I'm pretty happy with it. It is not by any means an exact replica of the camo on those doors, but it should touch all the important bits and pieces. And there we go. So now it's time to clean up. I got a lot to clean up, but really, we're gonna let this dry really, really well. I'm so tempted to start messing with it, put the hinges on and all that kind of thing, but that would be a really bad idea right now. Uh, we're just gonna let this dry, and then uh, hopefully it'll be good and hard. We'll get it on the truck, get the weather strips back on it, and call this job done. Day two. Uh, it's 7 a.m. Uh, yesterday was pretty much all day doing these doors. Um, they're mostly dry, but I need to get this put back together. Last night I needed to bring the truck back in to get it out of the weather without any doors on it. Um, basically, at this point, I need to get the hinges. Well, if you remember when I was preparing to paint the doors, uh, I indexed the hinges by drilling an extra hole in here. The um, standard setup on the hinge is to be slotted as so, uh, because you've got to really move these doors around. Uh, different Humvees may have different overall dimensions from the way they've lived their life, and uh, so you can't do the, uh, the, the you know one size fits all immediate bink. You have to do a multi size slip to fit all. So anyway, uh, I indexed, drilled a hole, uh, labeled each hinge for where they belong, and then put a little bit of paint on that, uh, that hole just to try to avoid the corrosion. This is going to get us really close. Now, in a, in a perfect situation, I would have gone ahead and drilled maybe a secondary hole, and then there's no way it would be out uh, once I put it on. But this should get us really, really close uh, to where we need to be, because the last thing you want to do is take a hinge on you know fresh paint and get in here and damage it. So the little paint on here, gonna get these on. You know, this is the left front bottom. This is a left front door. And that is gonna go, you know, on there like so. Not a rocket science moment, but you know, my, my center hole is gonna tell me where we need to be. And then the other bolts are gonna go right in place. Uh, yeah, so as you can see on the back side, uh, once I get all the tape pulled off, I have uh, the lip wraps all the way around where the weather strip is going to adhere and uh, uh, stick to. And that way, uh, again, we're not going to build corrosion up under the edge of the weather strip with a 
uh, epoxy primer and paint on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and set this door in. And remember, when you put the weather strip on, you're going to go flush with the edge of the door with the tang out. Uh, so I'm going to index this right off the tip of this. Uh, there's a rivet right here that will give me a point to start in the middle. And then we're going to stick it on and just going to work my way around. Moment of truth, here we go. Not bad, not bad at all. That's what we did this for, right? Yeah, good. So drilling that hole, drilling the hole in here before installing, before removing the door, uh, saved me a ton of time and possible damage to the paint trying to realign the door. It cost me, you know, a hole in each hinge, but not a big deal. Fits right on. I'm gonna keep going. One more. All right, taking a look at the doors. We got all the paint work done, weather strips on, they're mounted. Now bear in mind, this paint is brand new and fresh compared to the original paint on the truck. I do have some areas to touch up and repair when the weather's warmer and I'm get the whole truck in there for a paint. Got a little bit of damage on the hood from riding it on the trail. Need to repair and some other areas that need some attention. But I am very happy with the work. The time that took wasn't too bad at all. So you let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe how you would have done it differently. And uh I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch.